This is the Glorious Series 1 Pro, a mouse for hip and cool people like me. And the interesting thing with the Series 1 Pro is that it is a part of the Glorious Forge group buy, which means at this moment in time of making this video, it's no longer available. So this mouse is now rare. But should this mouse be a mainline product for Glorious? Or does it deserve to be a mouse just for hip, cool and financially irresponsible people? Well, I bought into this group buy to be the sacrifice. So if it becomes a popular mainline product, you can thank me. Let's start with something that's going to excite fans of the Razer Viper Mini. This is pretty much the same shape. Yes, the wireless Viper Mini exists and Glorious made it first for a limited run only. The listed dimensions for the Series 1 Pro are 118.5mm long, 62mm wide and 38mm tall. When I measure both this and the Viper Mini they're somewhat the same. There's maybe like a 1mm difference in some places. The biggest difference is the weight with the Series 1 Pro being 50 grams, so it's 11 grams lighter than the Viper Mini. This mouse is mainly designed for fingertip or claw grip which seems to be a recurring feature on this channel lately. You could palm grip this if you really tried but honestly unless your hands are small I doubt you'd find it comfortable when palming. I find that the curvature on the right side just goes in too far giving my pinky no support which eventually causes a bit of discomfort for me. Using it with a fingertip or claw grip is where this mouse starts to shine. It is just like the Viper Mini, my fingers are fully supported when gripping it this way, including the pinky. There is overhang on the buttons which I feel isn't ideal for fingertip or claw grip mice personally, but it's not going to be a deal breaker. And one thing that I wasn't happy about with the Viper Mini was the side buttons. I felt that the one closest to you was hard to trigger without moving your grip or having an effect on your aim. With the Series 1 Pro though, I find it easy to hit both of them them as they seem to be triggered by a lighter touch which is great. So these side buttons can both be used easily and just by placing your thumb on them and rolling it up or down. There's also a matte texture coating which adds to the comfort and also how much more grip you can get on this mouse. This coating would be slightly similar to the Razer Viper Mini as an example but it is not as coarse. I understand that people with fingertip or claw grip do prefer grip tape and this doesn't come with any. I got to say as well the mouse looks pretty good, I like the style it's got. It looks a lot better than other glorious mice and the other colour options are actually tasteful. Surely they've understood that RGB is actually pointless and a dated aesthetic that makes your products look like sh- Oh. Oh well. And in terms of build quality, well I'll save that for the end with my verdict as it's more relevant there. You get KLGM 8.0s on the main switches, the buttons on top of these feel really good, there's no pre or post travel at all and they help keep that crisp and consistent feeling that you'd expect from the switches. The side buttons as said before feel easy to trigger and have a good quality feel to them and so does the all important DPI button. It's great. The other critically important feature for gaming mice, the scroll wheel, is alright. It has a nice fast scroll but for me the notches aren't really that stiff. This would be down to personal preference more than anything though. I prefer something that's a little bit more rigid in terms of scrolling but it's not a major downside. The mouse 3 click is consistent also and feels great so the wheel in general is good and acceptable. For the internals you're getting what Glorious calls their BAMF sensor which stands for big and muscly females. I believe this is still a Pixar 3370 sensor, the newest Glorious mice will probably come with the 3395. Regardless it's not exactly a downgrade in terms of usability, at this point it's just bigger numbers written on paper that's the main difference between sensors these days. And because there's no RGB the battery life in theory is extended as Glorious say this mouse has over 80 hours on a single charge which is pretty good. They don't have have specifics but in the time that I've used it I've not had to charge it at all. So it's been about a week now and at the time of this review it's at about 64%. There is software for this mouse called the Glorious Core. Dare I say the software is actually decent when paired with this mouse at least anyway. There's two pages, one for changing bindings and adding macros, then the other page for DPI stages, lift off distance, polling rates and all the normal stuff. Finally before the verdict you get four PTFE feet on the bottom of the mouse. In terms of extras in a the box these days companies like to bribe their customers with goodies to represent their brand. Glorious give you a type C cable, a dongle adapter and stickers. I'm just saying Glorious, some other companies provide spare mouse feet and grip tape, you know, you could have provided something to sweeten the deal. I know you gave some silica gel but that's not even edible. 
So, in my opinion, I think this is a great product that should be made available all the time. The build quality of this is great as well, there's no rattle or any flaws to design either, so to me, it's a complete product. And I can't really think why they wouldn't make it a mainline product. If I compared this visually to the Model O or the Model O2, I'd say this looks like the more enticing product. I guess maybe it's whether or not there's enough interest for a Viper Mini wireless shape, as the Viper Mini gang have been shouting about a wireless version for ages. Razer has come out and said that the Viper Mini wasn't a big seller or commercially successful compared to their other mice. So maybe that information plus the numbers of Series 1 Pros sold in the first batch might dictate whether or not this becomes a full product in the future. When I've been playing with this mouse though I've really enjoyed it, there's only been discomfort when trying to palm grip it. Outside of that it's been comfortable, reliable and felt great, I really can't fault it in the gameplay department. This mouse is a bit pricey at around about $100 but I guess with it being lightweight, has great performance, looks good, and has a high quality to it, it ticks all the boxes that you want for a gaming mouse. And for those that want a Viper Mini Wireless, this is a good mouse to go for. And best of all, it exists at limited times. So I'd say it's probably worth getting notified when it becomes available again. The more interest there is, the more likely it will come back. And I don't just review mice on this channel as well, keyboards also get featured. There's one on screen now, you should watch it.